Oh, hi. I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. I'm just about to plant a tree and I'm feeling particularly virtuous because, you know, that's an important part of tree planting is virtue signaling. But I'm really going to plant a tree. I'm not just going to pay somebody else to do it. Um, so, you know, I want to replace uh, the poor old sentinel friend of mine that was taken down by a storm with a new young tree. Uh, it's a two-year-old spruce, I think. It cost me about $24 at one of the garden stores. And even though it's a bit late in the season, I'm just gonna I've dug a little hole here, put some water in there, and we'll put this guy in the ground and we'll see if it grows. What I wanted to say is that on June 22nd, Vancouver is awesome, reported that 29 million trees had been planted in Trudeau's tree planting plan. And just a couple of days later, Blacklock's reporter reported that actually no trees had been planted. So, you know, who do you believe these days in the media? Do you believe Vancouver is awesome, which says 29 million trees were planted? Or do you believe Black Locks Reporters, which was referring to internal documents from the government. Um, and also, Holly Ann Doan, who's the publisher of Black Locks, had pointed out that over the course of a decade, the forestry companies in Canada plant six billion trees anyway. So, you know, it's kind of odd that we had to develop our own tree planting program. So maybe. Maybe it is that people are planting trees for other purposes and they would have planted them anyway, but once they're planting trees, they can apply to the government to get money back or perhaps money on top of whatever trees they planted for other purposes. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> double dipping, I think it's called. Anyway, there's no double dipping here. I paid for my own tree and I'm gonna plant my own tree here in the ground, right here. And I'm gonna hope that it will take. It's a bit late in the season, but better late than never. And these are a fairly hardy kind of um, tree. So let's see if we can get some dirt back in the ground around this thing. So, you know, in one of our tree planting videos, I had mentioned that the tree planting program is costing about $170 per Canadian citizen. And some people took exception to that and they, some people said, well, look, you know, over the course of a decade, that's gonna cost you only $17 a year and you'll be planting about 54 trees per person. But, you know, I don't know who's gonna be planting those trees and if the forestry industry is already planting hundreds of millions of trees every year. Couldn't that government have just said to them, look, why don't you guys just plant, you know, a couple of million more, 30 million more, you know, incrementally up it. They already have the system in place. They have the nurseries and everything. There's not gonna be any chicanery. We don't have to add a level of government. We don't need extra bureaucrats to administer a tree planting program because we already have the best forestry industry in the world and they would just have been offered perhaps some kind of incentive, maybe even a tax incentive to plant some more trees. But no, instead you and I get to pay now $6 billion. So you wonder why they didn't do that. Well, I suspect, I suspect that this tree planting effort is really part of the World Economic Forum's One Trillion Tree Org program. And so these trees might be identified for certain carbon credit programs, you know, where like Shell has a program like that. If you pay extra money at the pump, then they'll go and buy a tree or buy some carbon credits and you can pretend that you're driving carbon neutral. You know, really, this is all a big scam. The nature program, carbon trading, 
the carbon tax, it's ridiculous. It's not stopping emissions anywhere, but it's making lots of people rich. And I have to tell you, you know, really the turning point for me in the whole climate thing was in 2010. That was before I was working with Friends of Science. I read an article in Harper's Magazine called Conning the Climate by Mark Shapiro. And he said that the carbon trading markets are unusual because they involve the lack of delivery of an invisible substance to no one. So that's what you're paying for with your carbon tax. And that's what carbon trading markets are trading in. So all that money is being skimmed off you who are doing real things, practical things, whether it be planting a tree, feeding your kids, working in your job, or you know buying groceries or going for a trip. You're doing real things, and the carbon markets and the carbon tax are all about the lack of delivery of an invisible substance to no one. So that was the end of it for me in terms of climate hysteria. Now, I got to say, climate change is real, and humans do contribute to it. And there are lots of ways that we do. One is deforestation, one is agriculture, one is land use, you know, like building cities. Um, another one is water diversion, you know, when you build a big dam, like the James Bay Dam. That affects the regional weather. It, it does change the weather patterns. And, you know, if you're in a city, the uh, downtown core of a city might be warmer than out in the country, you know, 15, 20 minute drive away. So, so we do affect climate, we contribute to it, but we're not the sole cause of it. And we should stop feeling guilty about it. And we should stop paying money for invisible schemes that just make carbon traders rich and make you poor. So that's my little rant for today. I'm gonna finish planting my little tree. I hope you have a nice fall. Winter is coming, be prepared. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.